So, 2022, and here is the first gun of the year to be reviewed as promised. It is the brand new out AGT Vulcan 3. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR on Air and straight into the new year with the promised new released Vulcan 3 from AGT. Only not content with reviewing one Vulcan 3, I've got two. The shorter length 177 calibre and the longer length barrel version in 2.2. These are both sub 12 foot pound versions but they are also available in FAC or higher power versions if preferred. If you do opt for the FAC version it's highly likely you would go for the longer version to maximise on the power levels. At this point it is worth mentioning that the FAC version is naturally more powerful than the 12 foot pounds but it isn't a super high power level such as 70, 80, 90 foot pounds. It's a much more usable and sedate power level around the 40 foot pounds in the shorter version and a comfortable 50 foot pounds in the longer version. Now, of course, that's subject to your preferred tuning level. Of course, I'm talking 2.2 calibre rather than any bigger calibres, but as I've said, these two are sub-12 that are being reviewed today. Without further ado, let's go straight to the walk-around and see just what the difference is in this V3, I'll call it, rather than the Vulcan 2 or V2 that I reviewed recently and loved, by the way. Straight away, the first thing you notice is this has a skeletal cutaway walnut stock rather than the black synthetic that was on the Vulcan 2. The quality of the fit and finish is beautiful and definitely makes this version stand out. But more on that stock a little later. Starting with a few stats, the overall length of the shorter version is 800 millimeters with an unscoped weight of 3.6 kilograms. Putting that into old speak is 31 and a half inches and just under eight pounds. The longer version is around a meter or a thousand millimeters overall length with a slightly higher weight of 3.7 kilograms, which gives it just over 39 inches and just over eight pounds. The barrel length on these two are 500 millimeters on the shorter version and 700 millimeters on the longer version. Certainly, having a barrel so long and such a high overall length, this does make it quite long for a bullpup. But any weight is definitely back into your body where it should be. And I've, as I've said, the longer version would probably be the choice in FAC or higher power versions. Or if you aren't restricted as much in tighter spaces, such as using it for pest controls in tight barns and the like. I will naturally be looking to see if the barrel length has any major effect on accuracy a little later. But to be absolutely fair, such a test should be completed in the same calibres. Looking at the barrels, well, more specifically the shroud, it's not just the length where the difference is. The diameter is larger as well to make the whole thing quieter. The old V2 had a 32 millimeter shroud diameter, whereas this V3 has a 38 millimeter diameter one, which is beautifully made with six flat grooves running most of the length. The end of this shroud contains 150 millimetres or 6 inches of silencer, moderator or whatever you prefer to call it. Whatever you choose to call it, it does make it quiet. Very quiet. 
If you're not content with that, you have the option of removing the M14 threaded end cover and fitting a silencer to it as well. But take note, it won't take a standard half inch UNF version. You will need to get one of the AGTs and boy, it is then really whisper quiet. Now my microphones have a tendency to cut down loud noises. So it's very difficult to show you in the program, but it's almost silent. Below this beautifully engineered CZ barrel is an oversized carbon bottle, which is 480cc version on the shorter and a 580cc on the longer version. Now, not content with that, there is also a 120cc plenum on both, which takes it to a total capacity of 600cc and 700cc on the shorter and the longer versions respectively. Now, before anyone asks about the shot count, all I can say is in sub 12 foot pounds, you'll finish it with RSI before you run out of air. I gave up after 200 shots and it's worth noting that there is more, this is more efficient air-wise firing pellets through it rather than simply dry firing. The filler port is just behind the bottle and has a rather nice simple but efficient dust plug to keep everything clean and dry. Directly behind this is the manometer or air gauge, which quite clearly shows the 300 bar fill pressure and takes a long time to see it drop due to the size of the air reservoirs on these things. All this gives it a much higher air capacity than the current Vulcan 2. Approximately double in fact. Moving to the top, we come to the raised Picatinny rail which has been built with a fixed 20 MOA slope, hinting at its longer range shooting design. Below this is the side lever cocking arm, which is interchangeable from left to right hand side, making this not only completely ambidextrous, but gives either handed shooter the choice of action. Now the action on this is indeed super smooth and has less of a sprung loaded flip open than most but a more defined and balanced closed lock action. Now if you look at this, this action is set nicely forward for maximum comfort making the rounded polymer cheek rest longer to help you find the most comfortable position when you're aligning up your preferred scope. Interestingly enough, the stock design and more specifically the butt plate has been positioned slightly higher to make this more comfortable for bench rest shooting or shooting off bags or bipods. Hmm, I'm starting to think these guys are looking to get this into competitions at some point. The magazines are loaded to the rear underneath that cheek rest and come in 15 rounds in 177 and 12 rounds in 22. These are the standard AGT magazines are pr and are pretty simple to load. First thing to do is to turn the inner wheel partly anti-clockwise until it goes past the hole behind it. Turn again, drop your pellet in. Turn again slightly, drop your pellet in and repeat until the whole thing is full. Once loaded up, pull back on the side lever and drop the magazine in from the left hand side and you can see just how nicely it slots in and is almost invisible and certainly doesn't get in the way of left or right handed shooters. Okay time to take a closer look at that stock then. 
right from the start, I need to say that this is quality finish with no rough edges and no sharp parts or faults. It shows the grain nicely, has a warm ergonomic feel to it. The grip is quite broad and again very comfortable in both grip and trigger positioning. The trigger is naturally a two-stage item and is fully adjustable. It has a curved blade with smooth center and grips to top and bottom. The safety is an in-trigger type but isn't overbearing and is crisp and precise with forward for fire and back for safe. In front of the trigger is an, another Picatinny rail that extends part way out under that front bottle for your preferred accessories. But I would say fitting a nice Atlas style bipod would be my favourite. Well, that's the walk around, and I must say they have made quite a few changes from the Vulcan 2, with most of them being done very discreetly. And they've been made for a reason, not just because. This is more of a different gun than an upgrade. And whilst I can see why people would still opt for the Vulcan 2, which is an amazing gun, I can definitely see why others would go down the Vulcan 3 route. I do, however, have one personal opinion on the Vulcan 3, and that would be, as much as I love this walnut stock, I would love to see a beautiful laminated stock version. One that would complement that front carbon bottle, maybe. Hmm. But, maybe, that's just me. Right, let's get these over the chrono, first of all, to see what they've been set at in the power stakes, shall we? Shorter version first, and choice of pellets, the 10.34 grain 177s and it saw 701 feet per second which equates to 11.34 foot pounds or 15.3 joules the longer version then which is 0.22 and after some brief testing i chose the 18 grain pellets and it saw 541 feet per second which is 11.7 foot pounds or 15.86 joules. My experience with AGTs has been they do like the slightly heavier pellets, but that's just my opinion. Of course, as with any gun, you can't just buy it and use the pellets you've always used and had lying around for years. You really do need to play around with a good half dozen different ones to try to find the most suited. It will pay dividends in the long run, I assure you. So, power-wise, both are about right for the UK market. If I can get my hands on an FAC version later in the year, we'll give one of those a try. Now, for the part that I've been waiting for, the target work. Time to get them out in the field, as it were, and see what these are capable of. Finding a calm day was a problem, but... Here goes. Vulcan 3 in its walnut splendor and nice oversized carbon bottles. <laughs> Continental scope. I love this scope. Every time members look through this, it it shocks them. It really does. So, nice combination. Let's get it out at 40 meters, see what it can do, shall we?
One of the things I want to do with this, because it's, it's very simple for me to keep doing these things, and as you know, Mrs. AAR appears occasionally, and I can absolutely assure you, she is a non-shooter, but she seems to have a bit of a, a, an automatic uh, bend for it, as it were, and she seems to be a natural. So, I'm going to get her to have a go with this, and see what she thinks. Let's just do it, shall we? Whoa! <laughs> I think I've just had eye surgery, I can see everything. Now then, that's not enough. Yes, her results are pretty good. There is no question just how simple and easy and complimentary this thing is. Let's really test her now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put paintballs out, again, right out at 40 meters, non-shooter, first time. She's not adjusted this, she's not done anything, she's just picked it up and gone with it. Let's see what the results are. Well, not content with doing it once. Let's see if she can repeat it. Yay! <laughs> and again. Three, one, try it again. Enough said, really. Absolutely lovely. A delight to shoot. And to be honest, this asks and begs to be shot out at greater ranges. It really does. The shorter Vulcan 3 in 177 was unbelievably accurate. And it makes you feel like you should be entering the international bench rest shooting competitions. Because you're invincible. When, in fact, it is brilliant and you're, well probably mediocre. You can stretch this out to whatever distance you want and it will just keep hitting whatever you're aiming at. Truly amazing. We tried the longer barrel version too and this was also very accurate even in 2.2 calibre that we were using. We both agreed that the 2.2 long version would be at its best and would really excel in the higher power FAC version. That's an excuse to get hold of one later in the year. You know, I had a feeling I was going to like these two right from the start, and I wasn't disappointed. Neither are what you would class as budget, I don't suppose, but you can definitely class them as quality. More exclusive than the usual run-of-the-mill higher price manufacturer's offerings, superbly engineered and accurate, an absolute joy to own and use. They are personalizable, if there is such a word, price-wise. Well, the shorter version is going to relieve you of around £1,699. And the longer version? Well, that's going to cost you exactly the same, believe it or not. The available calibres are 177, 
two two and two five and i think the two five is likely to be a real belter in fac and maybe that's the one that i should get my hands on later in the year you can tell i really want to do this these being agt they also come with a really nice padded case Two magazines to keep you going longer, user manual, filler connector valve for your air tank and filler probe attached, spare o-rings and a few freebies as well. Whichever calibre you choose, they are a dream to shoot and I've thoroughly enjoyed myself with these two. And I knew I would anyway. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review too. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, hit the old alarm notification bell to be told when the new reviews come out. Join in with the chat in the forums and the merch is available as usual from the website. A big thank you to the guys at Vector Air for getting hold of these for me to review. I really can't say thank you enough. And they're really pushing the boat out so far far this year to get hold of all these things. Above all, of course, a big thank you to you guys for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.